I love getting to come to churches. And before I go and speak anywhere, it's pretty interesting. I get invited to speak because people see my social media. They see me being outspoken about issues and policies and things that matter, current events. And then I show up and bring a message of hope and a message that I think heaven, I believe heaven is wanting to bring. And it's so well received. I spoke in Las Vegas the weekend uh, before last and end it with just a hardcore, it's about kingdom, it's about alignment with heaven and God. And I had, right when I was done, I had one of the oldest living World War II veterans walked up to the front on his own and just wanted to shake my hand. And I just reached down and gave him a hug. Little did I know he only had one hand. His other hand was missing. But it's so good to see that people are hungry and they understand the need for us to walk boldly in our faith. The enemy led our country into a lie when pastors and politicians said, we've got to separate church and state. And homes and pastors are like, ah, oh, we don't talk politics. We're seeing right now what takes place in a country where people of faith remove themselves from politics. Evil erupts. When you understand and appreciate this beautiful country that we live in, you have to understand and appreciate its foundation. And the reason we have the Constitution of the United States and the way it's grafted is because of our Judeo-Christian values and beliefs. So patriots get it, believers get it, and they used to be more one and the same. There was a separation that happened, but I'm here to tell you today that separation is coming back together, where patriots and believers are fighting and are getting involved and are getting into politics. Are getting into politics to bring the kingdom with them in that position and place of authority. And it's amazing to see. So before I came today, I was praying about what message did our papa want me to bring to you today? I call him papa. He's a good, good father. He's so good. Anybody else call him papa? Anybody in here feel like Papa or Daddy is a little bit too less reverent? It's not, it's not reverent enough? Because I understand that exists as well. I, more, I used to be more like that. And it wasn't because of any movie. Uh, what was it? The, the Shack? It wasn't because of that. But I just felt like there's a certain reverence when it comes to talking about God, the Father, which should be there. We've got to have reverence. But Jesus cried out, Abba. Father. And Abba is a close, intimate form of father, like we would use the name Daddy. The Father wants us to know Him as the good, perfect, nurturing, loving Daddy that He is. And when we when we are open to receive love from Him in that manner. Friends, it'll shatter your world. It'll, it'll change it. It'll shatter the paradigms you put God in. And it'll set you on a course that'll blow your mind. So when I was preparing for and praying about what message he wanted me to bring this morning, I felt like he said, shattered dreams. Has anybody in here experienced any shattered dreams over the last year or two? So for me, I don't know about y'all, but 2020 was probably pretty bad, maybe one of the worst years in a long time or ever. Anybody? And it seems like it's, we're an extension of 2020 right now, <laughs> maybe getting a little worse in some ways. My 
destructive year, my 2020 was actually in 2010 for me. It was, without a doubt, the worst year of my life. And it hit me this morning where I'm at. We're like, what, 45 minutes an hour from Hemet? Yeah, yeah. From Hemet? How many understand and are familiar with when things start to go haywire and crazy in your life, it can be really easy to reach for these crutches that we know aren't good, but we reach, up, reach for them because they soothe us in the moment. Yeah, yeah. For some people, it could be just eating. For some people, it could be watching TV or the wrong kind of TV. Some people, it could be drinking. For me, it was alcohol. And when my business had failed and people were leaving my company and my life was turned upside down, I drank and I drank way too much. And again, I, I'm probably just speaking to myself, but for me, when I didn't want the party to stop, I'd find a little bit of that white powder so I'd keep it going. I know it's only just me, right? Nope. Only me? Y'all have seen the movies, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And mind you, I was, I was a believer, but I was ignoring God. I was, I'm going to do it my way and I'll figure it out. How many of you guys have heard God speak or had seasons where you just said, nah, yeah. I'm just going to do things my way or I'm going to stay in my misery? Yeah. And how many of you understand misery loves company? Yeah. So when you're moving in the wrong direction, you better believe there's going to be a misery friend there to move along with you. So one night in 2010, while my life was an absolute wreck, I was drinking way too much. I went with a friend of mine over to Hemet to get some of that white powder. And like you've seen in the movie, you know, it's supposed to chop up nice and powdery, right? You've seen it in the movies. It didn't chop up. It was kind of smushy. And I was like, what are, we, what are we supposed to do with this? And my misery friend said, well, let's smoke it. I said, Okay. So I took a hit, and it was unlike anything I'd ever tried before. And he said, you like that? I said, yeah, it was different. He said, that was crack. Wow. That began two years. That was about 2009. That began about two years that I was hooked on crack. Wow. Started right there in Hemet. I kept it from my wife, obviously. You don't start smoking crack. Hey, babe. <laughs> Guess what I did? You want some? <laughs> I kept it from my wife as best I could wow. while working in the day, trying to support my habit at night, staying up till the wee hours of the night. We lived in Laguna Beach at the time. We wound up moving back to Redding, California, and my wife didn't know what was going on, but she knew something wasn't right. She didn't feel safe. She didn't feel like our daughters were safe. And she took them, moved out of the house. So people had stolen stuff from my company. I weigh about 270 right now. I probably weighed a buck 70. My wife didn't have any clue what was going on, but she knew it wasn't right. And she left. She was ready to leave me for good. And then one night... I took a hit that almost ended my life. I took a hit and my eyeballs started going up and down that fast. Like you can't make your eyeballs go up and down that fast. And in this moment, in that moment where I literally, my body was almost overdosing, in that moment I heard God speak to me and he said, don't freak out, don't freak out, this will pass, this will pass. The psalmist David said, even though I make my bed in hell, wow. even there, you're with me. Yeah. Incredible. It's powerful. Anybody ever made their bed in hell? Yeah. 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 It's powerful. It's powerful. May not be as the kind of hell that I put myself in, but we all at, at some time or another have an opportunity or, to put ourselves in some kind of hell. Even in that moment, I heard God speak to me. And so I didn't look at my misery friend. Because I didn't want him to freak out. It lasted about 60 seconds, and then it went away. The next morning, I called 
the guy that introduced me to that drug, and I told him what happened, and he said, David Harris, he said, you need to stop. If you would have panicked, your heart would have exploded. So believe me when I say, I should not be alive today. From the hell I'd put myself into and the shattered dreams that I felt, what I'm here to tell you today is no matter what dreams have been shattered in your life, no matter what bad decisions you've made, my life is a living example of what God can do with a life that just says yes. Just say yes. So after that, after that evening, uh, after that happened, it was about two weeks, and I woke up and I threw all my utensils, all the tools for, for all the drugs, I threw it all in the garbage. I literally just felt like it came to the end of myself. And I said, okay, God, I'm, I'm done rejecting you. What do you want me to do? And I heard him say, go to church. I said, what? Have you been to Bethel? <laughs> On a Sunday at 12 o'clock? I heard him say, go to church. Where you guys are at right now. I heard him say, go to church. So when I stopped arguing with God, I got in the car and I turned on Christian radio and I just began to weep. I'd literally made an absolute li- a mess of my life and yet right there, God was with me. I get to the church. Anybody been to Bethel before? So there's one road that leads off the main road all the way up to the top of the hill and that's where the church is. I get there, sunken in, 170 pounds. I turn on that street and the cars are lining the road. It's how packed the church is that day. I get to the top of the mountain and the cars are everywhere. I drive right past the prayer chapel and the the sign says parking lot full and the very first parking spot was open. I was like, I go in and the overflow seating is packed. Bleachers are packed, the lobby's packed. I'm looking out in the auditorium and I get a tap on my shoulder and the lady says, are you looking for a seat? You can have mine. I'm third row from the front in the middle, around the left. I'm like, And as soon as I sat down, they had already finished worship and announcements, and Pastor Eric Johnson walked up, and he says, today, I'm going to talk to you about the prodigal son coming home. Come on. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> we got any prodigals in the house? You're in the right place. He says, today, I'm going to talk to you about the prodigal son coming home and walking into his inheritance. I got prayer multiple times that day. God completely delivered me. No withdrawals. I never touched a crack of pain again. Isn't God good? I don't know what you're ailing today. I don't know what you're battling today. I don't know what you're not giving away to God today. But I'm here to ask you, why not give it all to God? His way is so much better than our way. His path... He'll bless our path with unbelievable things from shattered dreams for me to literally living a life beyond my wildest dreams today. That's what God can do with a life that says yes. So after that, I began to go after God and seek Him like never before. I began to push. God said, you know, you lived pretty strong for the enemy. Why don't you live that way for me? So I began to pray. How many people have their prayer language? Pray in tongues. I began to pray in tongues. I took what Paul said, pray without ceasing, literally. I began to pray. I tried to pray in the spirit literally all day. I tried to just pray. I made it a focal point to pray. I heard somebody ask me, and actually I think it's in Bill Johnson's book, Dreaming with God. Our heavenly language is a weapon. It is a spiritual weapon that's a gift from God to us. And how many of us, it's just sitting over there on a shelf. 
It is a weapon, friends. I began to pray in the spirit. I began to pray. I would try to pray all day and night. And I began to really engage with God in my secret place. How many of you in here have a secret place? Every single one of you needs to have a secret place. Let me tell you why. It's amazing when you can come to church and you feel God's presence. How many of you feel refreshed, renewed, revived in God's presence? It shouldn't be reserved for when you come to church. I've had amazing encounters with God in church, but I've had the most incredible encounters with God and His presence in my secret place. So what is a secret place? A secret place is a place where you get, it's just you and God, and you engage, you you work to engage in His presence. I turn on worship music like the worship music we're hearing. I turn on worship music, Bethel music, Brian and Jen. And for me, my secret place is in the shower, because nobody's bothering me in there. And it's just me and God, literally. And I'll turn on my phone, I'll turn on worship music, and I put Do Not Disturb on, and I just go after it. And I'm not there to ask Him for anything. I'm not there with my list of requests. I'm just there to thank Him for how good He is. Thank Him for His goodness. Thank Him for His blessing, for His grace. I'm just there to thank Him and honor Him. And when you go into your secret place with that attitude and mindset, to just engage with Him and praise Him and bless Him, encounters will happen. He will encounter you. So I want to share, I felt led to release this as well, I want to share with you an encounter that I had that I believe he wants his kids, his sons and daughters to have. He wants us to encounter him. He wants to encounter us more than we could imagine. How many believe that there's more of God that you haven't experienced yet? So I want to tell you what happened And I want you to close your eyes, because God is a spirit, and those that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So I don't know about you, but when I worship, I have my eyes closed, because I don't want anything I see in the natural to be a distraction. So as I share this with eyes closed and your heart open to say, yes, God, I know there's more of you, I want you to listen to this encounter that happened to me. And know that God is no respecter of persons. What he's done for me, he'll do for you and beyond. But this is something that absolutely changed the course of my life. And I firmly believe it was the foundation for now me living just a life of my dreams. As well as, let me add this really quick before I share that. Three months after that happened at Bethel, my wife came back and brought the girls back. We celebrated 27 years of marriage last April. Are you kidding me? That's restoration. I don't care what's broken in your life, God can restore it. He can restore it, and when He restores it, He restores it better than it was before. So now, get to this encounter. All right, close your eyes and listen. This is what's happening. I'm in my secret place. I'm worshiping God. I'm blessing Him. I'm thanking Him. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Daddy. I'm blessing Him. I'm thanking Him. And with my eyes closed, I see from my spirit, I see myself pull myself up onto this suspended platform of glass. And it's just a square. It's in the middle of darkness. The only way I could describe it is if you've seen Lord of the Rings when Frodo put the ring on and everything became dark and misty, that's what it was like. I'm standing there. And then I saw in the distance, I saw maybe 80 or 100 yards away, I saw the Father sitting on his throne. And when I saw him, my spirit leapt 
as I recognized him as my father. And I began to shout, that's my father! That's my father! You're my father! He wasn't just the father. He was my father. It was like a long lost relationship of father and son that had been separated for a hundred years, reuniting as my spirit just left. That's my father! I had an identity awakening that I recognized him and myself. I'm not just a child of God. I'm his child. He's my father. This went on for about five or six minutes, and then I saw Jesus standing next to him, and it erupted again, and I began to shout, that's my brother! than I felt my own brother was. This lasted for probably 15 or 20 minutes. And when I came down out of it, I had a whole new perspective of who I am and whose I am. And I'm telling you that I believe more now than ever, God wants his kids to know him and to encounter him like never before. That, becomes a, that became an access point for me in my secret place. I'll go back there, I'll worship, I'll praise, I'll honor, and then I'll see myself, lift myself up on that platform. I'm gonna tell you one of the things, I go back often. One of the times I was there, standing there, honoring the Father, honoring Jesus, I looked behind me and I saw I had wings. And as soon as I realized I could fly, I was in the air and I landed at the feet of the Father. And then I was terrified. I was terrified. And then the Father lovingly just pulled me up into his lap. He kissed me on the cheek and he said, call me daddy. Friends, he wants us to know him as Abba. He wants us to know him as daddy, that perfect, nurturing daddy. And when our identity is in alignment with who he sees us to be, we will create living shockwaves everywhere we go of his presence. After I came down out of this trance-like state the first time, I went to church, I was a little late. Bob Jones was there, the prophet Bob Jones was there preaching. I almost left because I was late. And I heard Holy Spirit say, no, stay. And so I stayed and that very morning, the first time I had that encounter, Bob Jones said, you know, we used to talk about going to heaven like it was an encounter that happened at the end of your life. He said, I'm here to tell you today that you can access heaven every day of your life. The Bible says now we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. How many of you understand there's so much more to being a child of God than just going to church on Sunday, feeling good and talking to our friends or family? He wants us to be able to walk as Jesus did. Jesus was our example. He is our example. And when we become If you want to have your own encounter, if you believe there's more of God for you, I want you to stand up right now. I want you to stand up. Stand up and hold your arms out, your hands out as a child that's expecting a gift from their father. 
or as a child that's reaching up to their daddy to be picked up with that heart of expectancy, I want you to just say yes. Just say yes to God right now. Just say yes. God, I say yes. God, I want more of you. God, I want you to have your way. God, I want to get out of your way so that you can do what you want in my life. God, I say yes to you. I say yes to more of you. I say have your way in my life. Jesus, I say yes. Daddy, I say yes. Daddy, I say yes. Have your way. I want to encounter you. I want to encounter you like never before. Just say yes and pray, Father. I pray for anyone that's eagerly anticipating a new encounter with you, God. I pray you would encounter them like never before in this room right now, God. Release encounters. Your own, however you want to encounter them, God. Encounter them in their car. Encounter them in their secret place. Give them a hunger and a desire to have a secret place where they go intentionally to meet with you, to seek you, to bless you, to honor you, to thank you. And God, I pray when they do, you would meet them. You would meet them there. Meet them there. Let us become the bride that has made herself ready. <laughs> Let us become the people, the children of God that the Bible talks about in the final days. People will say, tell us about your God. Let us be that people that walk with an expectancy to see you move in the miraculous when we pray. Give us encounters with you. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of this show. In Jesus' name. this place this morning you don't know about this God that I'm telling you about you don't know about this Jesus that loves you so much that wants to walk with you in life or maybe you've known and you've walked away you're trying it your own way you've been doing it your own way maybe you've known but you've walked away whatever it is if you want to know this Jesus if you want to accept this Jesus into your life, if you want to say yes to him, to living for him and not living for yourself, I want you to put your hand up right now. Put your hand up. Yes, 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 yes. Put your hand up. Yes, I want to come down to the front. I want you to come down to the front right now. I'm going to pray with you. We're going to pray. If you're saying yes to God, if you're rededicating your life, if you want to say yes, come down to the front. deny self Jesus said not my will but your will be done and I am living proof of what God can do with a life that says yes 
So I'm going to pray this prayer. I want you to repeat after me. Church, I want all of you to pray it with us. If you're down here in front, whether you're coming back to him or you're praying it for the first time, I want to welcome you to daddy's family. Pray this prayer. Say, Father, I come to you now, a sinner, doing life my own way. I need you. I want you. Please forgive me for my wrongs. I believe that Jesus died for me because he loves me. And I believe that he rose again for me. I receive him into my life. And I ask you to cleanse me now for my wrongs. Now, whatever you've done, whatever you've done that you know, Prince, that you know has been keeping you from God, you don't have to speak it out loud. But I want you to just release it off your mouth. Whatever it is, for me it was the alcohol, it was the drugs. Whatever it is, release it. Again, you don't have to say it out loud, but release it. Give it to God. Give it to God. Bitterness, resentment, release it. Now say, Holy Spirit, cleanse me and fill me up right now. In Jesus' name. Now just receive. Holy Spirit, we ask you to just fill every heart, every mind, every person that's just confessed to you, that's just given their wrongs to you. God, fill them with your presence. Reveal the Father's heart to them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now pray this, Jesus, I'm thankful for you, for what you did for me. And I ask you for courage and a hunger to live for you with all my heart, in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening. To find out more about our locations, team, and what we do here at Awakened Church, go to awakenedchurch.com.